一八九六年以前，人类并不知道地球的最北端究竟是陆地还是海洋。挪威人南森给了世界一个明确的答案：北极是冰冻的海洋。今天，那片人类印象中永恒的白色开始发生变化。这种变化以某种超越视觉感受的方式演进，伴随气候变暖，白色加速褪去，蓝色慢慢扩张。在两种颜色的交替中，北极开始了它的危险之旅。飞机的轰鸣打破了极地冰原的寂静。这是位于北纬八十九度的巴尼欧冰上大本营，距离北极点仅仅一个纬度，约一百一十公里。一年当中，只有在极夜刚刚过去，冰还没有开始融化的时候，这里才能搭起临时性的帐篷。为那些徒步或滑雪到北极点探险的人们提供一些必要的服务。借助这里提供的补给和训练，维克多先后带领二十五支探险队成功到达了北极点。今天，他又顺利地将一支探险队带到了地球的最北端。这是一支有趣的队伍。里面有十二次远征北极的英国爵士，也有只为在北极点冰泳的俄罗斯商人。这个叫杰克的年轻人，平生第一次到北极，是为了迎娶心爱的女孩而接受女友父亲的考验。更多的人为科学考察而来。物理海洋学家莫里森就是其中的一位。过去十四年里，他每年都要到这里进行科学考察，通过年复一年的放置浮标，测试海洋压力数据，观察北极的环境变化。And we see it mostly in the thickness of the ice. When I used to come out here in 2000 and 2001, the ice might be typically two and a half meters thick. That would be where we would have a camp. Over certainly over two meters. And now the ice that we're sitting on right now is about 1.4 meters. And so this is something that we have direct experience with because. We drill through the ice all the time to put out these buoys. And, 正如今天的人们知道的那样，北极点附近是一片冰冻的海洋。在北极点从事人类活动，需要足够厚实的海冰。因此，自2002年俄罗斯地理协会开始设立巴尼欧大本营以来，它一直就是个临时性营地。只能在每年三四月份存在短短一个月时间，而现在，在最适宜人们活动的季节，北极点的海冰似乎也不那么安全了。这无疑增加了维克多带队探险的难度。Sometimes, you know, when you ski to the North Pole, you cross pressure ridges, you cross thin ice. And you have to know which ice is very good to cross to ski on it, not to fall down. 前往北极点的道路有多危险？极地探险家奥斯兰也许是这个星球上最有发言权的人之一。这个五十三岁的挪威人被誉为当代最成功的极地探险家。他曾经无后援，独自一人跋涉抵达南极点和北极点，又和一名同伴在没有任何外援补给的情况下，在冬季完成了环北冰洋探险
。这是人类第一次在极夜环境里完成技术上极端困难的远征。他还是全世界第一个在北极点举行婚礼的人，很少有人比他更熟悉北极。然而，那里的变化之快，让他也为之震惊。When I first started to do expeditions uh, almost 30 years ago, not many people were talking about uh, the, uh, the climate change at all, or that the ice was was thinning, even if it had already started at that point. But uh, there was a huge difference between uh, the first expedition in in 90, uh, 1990 and the crossing I did in 2001. Uh, a lot of the ice that um, was uh, was there in, in the first expedition was gone in the second one. 一九九零年，奥斯兰首次远征北极点时，雪橇是他最倚重的工具。那时，向北极点进发的大部分路段都可以用雪橇划过。但当他2007年重返北极点时，橡皮筏子取代了雪橇，成了利用率最高的工具。厚实的海冰被海水取代，残留的冰凌很少有两年以上的了。Well, the environment has changed a lot because of the ice is becoming thinner. So now we are faced with much more open water than before. Uh, which is a difficult uh, or a different challenge. Uh, so one, one change from the early days is that now I have a swimsuit that I swim across open water with. And on the French Joseph Land expedition, we actually used kayaks instead of sled. So because then we could pull the kayaks and when we came to water, we paddled. And then we came to ice, we pulled and paddled. So we were very fast. Because 发生在北极点的这一切，并非孤立的现象。这是这个星球上正在发生的大事件。最近二三十年来，与全球气候变暖伴生的各种变化相继发生，其演进速度远远超出人们的想象。这是格陵兰，面积二百一十七万多平方公里的世界第一大岛。这里百分之八十以上的地区冰雪覆盖，冰山林立，其中又以伊卢利萨特最受人瞩目。在格陵兰语中，伊卢利萨特的意思就是冰山。全长约四十公里的伊卢利萨特峡湾，是世界上最壮观、最美丽的冰川之一。联合国教科文组织2004年认定它为世界自然遗产。那些专程来格陵兰旅游的人，多半是为伊卢利萨特的美丽冰川而来。The first year I came, the tourism was more like individual guests coming to experience Greenland. But the, through the three years, I feel that the, they are learning more about group traveling. So they buy, they come in groups, and the, the groups are getting bigger and bigger. Eric owns a restaurant in Beijing. 二十多年前，当他刚刚到这里工作的时候，酒店规模还非常小，只能供人们在探险途中做短暂停留，甚至无法提供食物。如今，经过三次扩建，这里已是今非昔比。The first time it was in the year 2000, and then in 2008 and 2009, and then we further added a conference center. You know, in Scandinavia, we uh, have a rating for hotel qualification, and we were rated with a maximum uh, five stars for our hotel conference facilities. 巨大的冰架轰然倒下，滑入海中，是到访格陵兰的游客最期待的景观
。这种让人叹为观止的景观，让埃里克心情复杂。更多的游客意味着更好的生意，但这样的景观是冰川持续融化的结果。随着气候变暖。伊卢利萨特乃至整个格陵兰岛的冰川消融速度加快，冰峡湾已经很难再找回昔日的模样。Due to the climate change, which was uh, uh, especially uh, clear for us in 97-98, because until then there have been thick sea ice here just outside the town, and it gradually gets thinner and thinner. Eventually. It 与其他地区会经历四季变化一样，北极海冰也会随季节而变。通常来说，北极海冰的范围在每年三月和九月分别达到最大值和最小值。一九七九年至二零一三年，北极海冰范围呈现显著的下降趋势，其中三月范围平均每十年减少约四十万平方公里。九月范围平均每十年减少约八十九万平方公里。创纪录的历史低值出现在二零一二年八月二十六日，当天北极海冰范围为三百四十一万平方公里，比五年前夏天创下的历史低值少了近一百万平方公里。而与北极海冰冬季一千五百万平方公里的覆盖面积相比，相当于当年化掉的海冰超过一千万平方公里，比世界第二大国家加拿大的国土面积还要大。海冰消融，对依赖海冰生活的动物，无疑是一场灾难。研究人员发现，北极动物中，冰面消退对海豹的伤害尤其直接。通常来说，海豹大部分时间都与海冰为伴。它们在冰面下钻孔，在冰面上哺育幼崽，基本不到陆地上。在早春，稳定的冰面和充足的食物对于生产下一代至关重要。新生的小海豹需要大约六周的哺乳期，如果冰面过早断裂，海豹幼崽的存活率将明显降低。而这，只是连锁反应的一个部分。这组照片拍摄于2013年8月的斯瓦尔巴群岛，一头饿死的北极熊像一张平铺的毛毯，出现在世人眼前。最初，人们的惊叹仅仅聚焦在作为个体的北极熊身上，但当类似的情形一再出现时，人们开始意识到。作为北极食物链的霸主，北极熊的生存真的出现问题了。加拿大曼尼托巴省丘吉尔镇，位于哈德逊湾西南侧。这里是加拿大北极台原地区的起点，可以观赏到众多北极野生动物，当中最负盛名的是北极熊。每年，丘吉尔镇都会吸引大量来自世界各地的游客，因此，加拿大政府组建了专门的队伍，为到访的游客提供安全保卫。凯文就是当中的一员。近些年，夏季出现在陆地上的北极熊明显增加。这为丘吉尔镇吸引了更多的游客，但也给凯文的工作增加了不可知的风险。与冬季相比，这些夏季出现的北极熊攻击性要强得多，这让凯文荷枪实弹出勤成了一种常态。What we're trying to avoid is the surprises. Anytime they surprise you when they come up and walk towards you in the group and stuff like that. Uh, that can be very, very scary and very dangerous sometimes. It does happen occasionally, but that is why we carry firearms. And I would never ever want to shoot a, a mother polar bear or her cub if that ever happens. So I really, really want to know if a, if a family group is approaching 
our sites, it's very, very important to keep an eye on them. Kaiwen 并不确信这种变化因何而来，但他直觉跟饥饿有关。以前，丘吉尔镇北极熊最多的时候，一般在九十月份。那时，北极熊会在哈德逊湾的冰上尽情捕食海豹，与近在咫尺的丘吉尔镇居民和平相处。但近些年，化冰期更早了，结冰却越来越晚，捕猎季节随之缩短，北极熊开始频频入侵小镇，寻找食物。在小镇街头，甚至是居民家里，人熊遭遇战时有发生。现在的丘吉尔镇随处可见熊出没的警示牌，这是当地政府新发起的名为“北极熊预警项目”的组成部分。If a bear is not a good hunter, and they are very thin, they become a very dangerous bear. That could be a problem. And and they look at us. We are not really on their their list of food, but we are very easy easy targets, easy pickings, as I like to say, for the bears if they are very very hungry. So that's one thing we have to really watch for. And with these this changing environment, you know,、uh, I I really hope that these bears do not become starving and start to attack us. I really hope it doesn't happen. But I've got to keep a watchful eye all the time. 自从十六岁随父母从美国移居加拿大，凯文在丘吉尔镇度过了他大半段人生。从结婚到有了一个可爱的女儿，再到亲手盖起自己的房子，他珍惜目前的生活，但现状让他有些困惑，未来会怎样，更加无法预料。I'm hoping they'll slow down.、Uh, how? I don't know. But change is inevitable. There, it, everything changes. 伴随气候持续变暖，哈德逊湾一带有越来越多的北极熊来到岸上生活。作为陆地上最大的食肉动物，北极熊需要海豹这样含有丰富脂肪的猎物来维持身体所需。但海冰消融在伤害海豹的同时，也把北极熊带入了困境。研究人员已经观察到北极熊的食谱正在变得复杂，里面包括老鼠、驯鹿，甚至是它们的幼崽。面对饥饿，北极熊开始变得不那么挑食。独立摄影师亚当·拉文奇历时两年，记录到了这样一幕画面：野生动物专家研究了1984年至2004年哈德逊湾捕捉北极熊的数据，发现二十年间北极熊数量下降了百分之二十以上。北极熊能迅速适应新环境。正是这种能力，使它在演化过程中经历数次全球变暖而存活下来。但这次，科学家担心，北极熊生活环境的变化要远快于其适应环境的速度。过去十二年。海洋生物学家马丁持续观察着大西洋和北冰洋里的鲸鱼活动。通过技术手段，他和同事们在鲸鱼身上装上 GPS 传感器，然后通过专门的接收装置追踪鲸鱼的活动。Uh, and we know that for the past few weeks there has been quite a lot of activity, both with fishing, with herring, and also with whales in the area. So,、uh, and sure enough, we just rounded the corner, and、uh, there are two whales already here, and there are some more further out. Excuse me.
在位于北纬六十九度二十分的特罗姆瑟海湾观察鲸鱼，十年前还是一件难以想象的事情。那时，明显的鲸鱼活动只会出现在这里往南一百多公里的罗浮敦群岛海域，但最近十年来，鲸鱼的活动区域逐渐被移。This phenomenon that started happening four to five years ago with, uh, with the whales showing up all of a sudden in the fjord system, um, it has not really been seen before, at least not in this part of, of the Norwegian coast. So we wanted to try to find out what is it that brings the whales here. And uh, of course, the main thing is the herring. So everything that happens in the fjords now is because of the huge amounts of herring that, uh, that have started coming into the fjord systems. So this is the first time that it's seen in this part of, of the coast since then. Um, and what we think is happening is that it's linked in some way to ocean currents, specific water masses that come in. For example, warmer waters coming up, coming up from, the, from, from further south in the Atlantic. ...与鲸鱼习性变化相伴的是短短二十年间,北海鱼类物种从六十种增加到八十多种,这是科学家称之为生态北移变化中的一部分。在大西洋，科学家们发现了一种来自太平洋的浮游藻类，而太平洋生物上一次进入大西洋是在大约两百万年前，随即出现一次大规模外来海洋生物入侵，彻底改变了北大西洋的生态系统。在常年冰雪覆盖的高北地区，科学家们发现已有超过九百万平方公里的面积变绿，由苔藓。第一和浆果植物构成的北极苔原正在逐步让位于灌木丛和北方森林，植被在过去三十年平均北移了四到六个纬度。喜冷的高山植物种群正逐渐从欧洲南部山脉中消失。遥远孤寂的北极，日渐变得生机勃勃。尽管这些变化中的大多数，人们还难以判断意味着什么，但本能已经让人感受到了那些看似平常的温度变化中暗藏的危险。There's certainly been a trend in in warming、uh, over the last twenty, thirty years. The place we really see it the most,、uh, according to models. And, uh, and in my experience, is in the polar regions, and it's called、uh, polar amplification, and especially in the Arctic. This is observations of the global mean temperature over recent decades, and as we can see here, the global mean temperature at the surface is increasing here over time. But this increase is not the same at all latitudes. So here we have split this. Temperature time series into the different latitudes. So here we have the high latitude, and we see that the high latitude is warming much more than the lower latitude, and that is what we call the polar amplification. 同样的温度变化，在极地会以更大幅度呈现出来。这是北极被称为全球气候变化响应和反馈最敏感地区的主要原因。近三十年来，这里的平均气温上升速度是全球气温上升速度的两倍。成倍的温度上升意味着更加剧烈的后果。在过去，格陵兰岛的冰盖会把照在它表面上的太阳光反射掉一半以上。这种反射作用能有效减少冰面的热量吸收，从而使冰盖保持稳定。但过去十年里，人造卫星观察到，伴随气温加速上升，冰盖持续融化，这种反射作用正在逐渐减弱，更多的太阳光被吸收，反过来又加剧了冰盖融化。Last year we、uh, we worked around in southeast Greenland, and、uh, there's a couple of very large glaciers in southeast Greenland. There's the Kangalusuak. Uh, and then these,、um, the Helheim Glacier, those are of the top three. They are the two ones, and then you have the Jakobshaven, which is, of course, very famous also. But that, the one that we see here is actually the,、uh, the Helheim Glacier. That, so, the, so the iceberg that is coming around here, that is breaking off from the ice sheet, 
is uh, is uh, maybe seven or eight hundred meters deep, and and uh, more than maybe one and a half kilometers long. So it's a huge uh, event, and when that have turned around, then there there will be an, another one that will be uh, that will be initiated. So uh, so this is one of the processes where the uh, where the ice sheet is coming out. It's flying. It's uh, flowing out into the fjord, and where it's losing the mass during these uh, carving events. 持续的冰川融化不断注入北冰洋，是过去一个世纪海平面上升的主要原因之一。目前，地球上的冰川绝大部分集中在南极大陆和格陵兰，其中又以格陵兰冰盖最为活跃。研究人员发现，自1990年起，海平面每十年上升三厘米左右。比一九零零年到一九九零年的上升速度快大约二点五倍，这种加速上升与格陵兰冰川的快速融化密不可分。Depends on work in the world. So if you say we are seven and a half billion people on the earth now on the planet, then you can in the early nineties you could give something maybe a few thousand liters, maybe three four thousand liters to each one of this water, fresh water from the Greenland ice sheet. But now Uh, some two decades later, you can give almost 45,000 liters of water to each of us. So that is the development and the mass loss of the of the Greenland ice sheet that that you see. 二零一三年，美国国家地理杂志根据地球冰川完全融化、海平面上升六十六米的假设，描绘了一幅全新的世界版图。在亚洲。中国六亿人口居住的东部沿海地区全部被海水淹没，北京、上海、香港等大都市全部从地图上消失，日本只剩下小半的山地。在北美，美国的东西海岸成为重灾区，整个佛罗里达被抹去。在欧洲，伦敦、威尼斯等名城彻底成为历史。目前，格陵兰岛中心冰层仍然厚达三千多米。科学家认为，等它全部融化，至少也是上千年以后的事。对大多数人而言，这仅仅只是一种假设，无需太过担忧。但在地球上的某些角落，这样的场景，却正在成为现实。基瓦利纳地处北美大陆西北角，从地形上，它只是北美大陆延伸向白令海峡中的一个小岛，但它也是四百多名因纽特人的家。六月下旬，狩猎季已经快要结束，村里还一头鲸鱼都没有捕到，这让老猎人拉里多少有些难堪。作为村子里最好的猎手之一，拉里对鲸鱼、海豹这些常见猎物的迁徙习惯了如指掌，但仿佛一夜之间，这些经验都失去了作用。We're losing our fish, we're losing our u g r o s we're losing our beluga migration. They're changing route due to more water, earlier time. Uh, all the animals are migrating like past two years, two weeks ahead of time. And we're not normally wet, ready, because it's two weeks too early. <laughs> we didn't catch nothing this year. Last year, the, I think they catch four of them last year. But um, the year before that, they catch seventeen, and so you could see the difference. 海滩上晾晒鱼肉干的架子，零星的挂着几片鱼肉。对于主要依靠打猎捕鱼为生的村民来说，这意味着今年冬天的食物很可能会出现问题。但真正的麻烦远比食物短缺来得严重。由于海平面不断上升，最近二十年土地不断被吞噬，日渐松软的土地承载不起地上的建筑。房舍垮塌的事情时有发生。二零一四年，一场暴雨直接冲垮了岛上的学校。In maybe 2020 or 
terrified it will flood soon. The, this this land will be gone. We might have to move to another place, village, or move school or like that. 村子边缘的防波堤，全部由巨大的石块堆成。这是二零一三年政府出动军队修建的。在那之前，村里曾用沙袋和沙石两次修建防波堤，但很快都被风浪摧垮。数百万美元的投入成为泡影。面对越来越多的极端天气，这种防范手段到底有多大效果？没人感到乐观。I see it get.、Uh, I see it shrink. Smaller it gets smaller, narrow, but end to end is still the same. We're getting more current, more water, more waves, more storm、uh, than normal. Ten years ago, we would get three, four, four, three or four good storms a year. Nowadays, it's like every other week we get storms now. In Kivalina. 气候变化并不是一个多么高深的专有名词。身边发生的一切清楚地告诉了村民，他们是如何受到气候变化影响的，而且他们很清楚，这一切并没有结束。夕阳西下的时候，是基瓦利娜一天中最美的时刻。人们喜欢在这个时候出来散步，孩子们也喜欢在这个时候。到并不大的沙滩上玩耍。说到将来，拉里有一种老人家的固执和坚持。他说，他不会离开。Somebody try to kick me out of there, they would have to bury me. Um, kind of. I even tell our city, I'll help you guys move, but you ain't touching my house. I want to buy this island when you guys move. That's my feeling about Kivalina, because I was born there, and it's kind of important to me. 全球目前有大约一点五亿人生活在高出海平面不到一米的地方。按目前的速度测算，到本世纪末，海平面将上升大约零点六米。世界著名的沿海城市几乎都面临着消失的威胁。而像印度洋明珠马尔代夫，世界上唯一地跨赤道、横跨国际日期变更线的基里巴斯等岛国，更是可能会完全消失。上世纪六十年代，基瓦利纳因为海平面上升开始为外界所知。现在，这个弹丸之地遭遇的问题，离其他地方的人们已经并不遥远。二零零四年，一部名为《后天》的美国影片席卷全球。电影描绘了全球变暖带来的可怕场景。由于北极冰川融化，大量淡水进入北大西洋，破坏了原先气候系统中南北热量的输送模式。得不到洋流热量补充的地方，温度巨降，地球进入新的冰河时代。冰川融化，在这里以另一种面貌展现了它的后果。这些仅仅只是想象吗？后天的电影的科学基础上是很坚实的，它是在这个历史上有确有其事，而且是从各种证据表明，像后天嗯所这个渲染的这种事情，在历史上曾经发生过，当然没那么快了。所谓的这个气候突变现象。嗯，在主要发生在这个北大西洋这个区域，然后向全球扩展。简单来说，地球环境中存在一个全球洋流循环系统，它们依靠水的温度和盐度驱动，将赤道暖流输送到高纬度地区，使那里获得温暖湿润的气候。同时，高纬度地区温度较低的水体也会循环到低纬度地区。形成水体交换的平衡，在这个过程中，高纬度地区的海水需要维持必要的盐度，才能获得较高的密度下沉，从而使洋流循环保持正常。但当冰川大范围融化
巨量淡水注入北大西洋，情况就会发生变化。就是说，使得北大西洋的暖流上不去了，阻断了。另一个，海水变了淡了以后呢，这个冰点就会呃提升。我们知道，这个咸水或者盐水不容易结成冰，当变淡以后呢，海的表面就会很容易形成海冰。海冰生生成海冰，就相当于生成了一面镜子，把太阳光就会反反射回去，局地就会就会突然变冷。电影自有其夸张的一面，灾难却并非完全虚构。持续的气温升高与海冰融化，对极地而言只是局部气候变化，但在更加广阔的远方，却是被放大了无数倍的气象灾害。二零零八年春节前夕，罕见的低温冰雪灾害袭击了中国南方近二十个省份，城乡交通、电力、通信遭受重创，三千九百多万贵州人经历了他们人生中最寒冷的一个月后，才终于看见了一缕微弱的阳光。二零一四年初，经济下行的压力尚未退去。全美超过三十个州又拉响了寒潮警报，一次二十年来最强寒流直接威胁到至少一点九亿美国人的生活。寒流和强暴风雪正在成为北半球的常客，一次又一次极寒天气不断打破亚洲、欧洲和北美洲众多国家的历史记录。北极这个增长就是我们所所说的长时间一个北极的放大效应。这种效应就会导致北极地区这个极温要减弱，就极温这个像一个气旋一环，它要减弱，减弱以后呢，就有利于北极的冷空气向外面辐散。这种极地冷空气辐散多了，就容易导致我们国家冷冬出现，冷的事件频发，这是最直接的原因。And the sensitivity is is such that the less sea ice, the more sea ice melts, the more the cold outbreaks will affect Eastern Asia. And that includes Eastern China, Japan, and Korea. But Eastern Asia is is the at this point the best example we have of a region that is impacted by changes in the Arctic. 时至今日，大多数科学家都承认。极端天气和气候变暖之间确实具有关联性，而人类活动又在全球变暖中扮演着关键角色。二零一三年，瑞典斯德哥尔摩，联合国政府间气候变化专门委员会在这里发布了一份气候变化评估报告，刷新了国际社会对人类活动影响气候的认知。报告指出。自工业化以来，人为排放导致大气中二氧化碳、甲烷等温室气体浓度达到了过去八十万年以来的最高水平。与之对应的是，从有详细气象记录以来的十九世纪五十年代开始，地球最高气温被不断刷新。一九八三年到二零一二年，成为北半球一千四百年来最热的三十年。人为影响是造成观测到的二十世纪中叶以来变暖的主要原因，这一论断的可信度高达百分之九十五以上。First, there is no doubt and then climate change is inequivocal. There is no doubt about it. The second message is that the more we disrupt our climate system, the more we'll face severe. Pervasive, disruptive consequences, impacts, and then those might may be irreversible. And then the last one is a message of hope. Still, we do have means to build present and better future. This is founded in 1988 by the Government Climate Change Planning Committee. It is the most comprehensive report on the climate forecast to date. 在过去二十多年里，从世界各地汇聚到一起的数千名科学家，根据全球范围内已有的与气候变化问题相关的科学、技术、社会、经济等各方面资料进行系统评估
，总共形成了五份报告。这些报告代表了现有条件下国际社会对气候变化问题的最大共识。For instance, they said that they want the two-degree target by the end of the century, and then clearly what came up with the uh, IPCC report: if that is the case, stringent and urgent action are needed. And then if we delay the action, it will be much more difficult for us to reach that degree. If we wait until the whole world has made the same statement, the first one is not possible. Both of them are not possible. 科学家自身也不可能发出完全百分之百的一致的声音。第二，我们也没有时间等到那一天，因为我们来不及了。一方面是尚未消弭的认识分歧，另一方面是严峻的现实挑战。监测数据显示，从1880年到2012年，全球平均气温已上升 0.85 摄氏度。其中零点五摄氏度的上升发生在最近四十年中，气温加速上升已是不争的事实。这意味着更多温室气体进入了大气，而让科学家担忧的是，在广袤的地表下面，还潜藏着对气候变化更具致命影响的威胁。海拔三千六百多米的祁连山鹅脖岭，是兰州大学教授张庭军的定点动土采样区。平坦的山坡上，动土融化造成的地表塌陷，自西向东延绵数百米，像一道巨大的伤口。在塌陷处，曾经封存在冻土中的有机碳正在加快释放。冻土。泛指零度以下的土壤，在漫长的自然演进过程中，大量有机物以碳的形式封存在冻土中。最近十多年，伴随气温升高而来的冻土退化，让封存其中的碳变得不再安分。没有退化之前，这一部分碳呢就冻在里面，它不发生跟大气不发生交换。那么现在像这样的情况，冻土退化以后，这一部分深层埋藏在冻土里面的碳，它和大气直接发生交换，它很可能在冻土退化的情况下释放到大气中间去。在北半球，有四分之一的陆地包含多年冻土，覆盖了俄罗斯、阿拉斯加、加拿大和斯堪的纳维亚半岛的大部分地区。科学家估算，深埋其中的碳含量已经超过一万八千亿吨。相当于目前大气中碳含量约二点五倍，它们的释放有时候仅仅需要一点并不起眼的温度变化。So in a typical permafrost area in northern Alaska, the annual average temperature is maybe minus five or minus ten degrees C. Now the the more interesting areas are the ones closer to the edge of the permafrost. In those areas, the average temperature is presently very close to zero degrees C, and that's the case in which a small amount of warming can make a major difference because it will change the the frozen state to the liquid state. 最关键的问题，目前我们预报的未来气候变化，从这个气候模型里面还没有考虑这一部分。目前我们只考虑了人为活动造成大气中二氧化碳含量增加。导致气候会发生什么变化？那么冻的冻土释放这一部分碳对冻大气里什么影响？对气候变化有什么影响？目前我们还没有还还没有做。冻土中的碳需要多久会全部释放出来？目前的研究尚无法给出准确的答案，但科学家习惯称它为“碳弹”，意思是，一旦爆发，无可挽救。Je vois que la réaction est positive. Je n'entends pas d'objection. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. 二零一五年十二月十二日，巴黎气候变化大会主席、法国外长法比尤斯敲响绿色小锤，宣告里程碑式的巴黎协定诞生。经过十二天的紧张谈判与磋商。全球近二百个国家和地区终于取得共识，人们欢呼雀跃
，相互拥抱，庆祝争论不休的国际社会终于有了一致的应对气候变化的目标。短短十多天后的十二月三十日，在一场强风暴的影响下，北极点创下了冬季气温升至零度以上的罕见纪录，这比以往同一时期正常温度高出了三十摄氏度。现实的挑战只会比欣喜的人们所能想象的更加艰难。是做些什么，还是听之任之？这是当下所有人都无法回避的选择题。不同的人当然可以有不同的选择，但生态系统有其固有的巨大惯性。气候变化一旦达到临界点，即便温度不再继续升高，气候变化也会自行发生。科学家并不能告诉你那会是一个更好或更坏的世界。唯一可以确定的是，当那一天到来，所有人将不再有选择的权利。